First and foremost, thank you guys for attending our Next Gen webinar. We are very excited. And for the very first time, we have panelists and, student, and uh, people from TBCE that I want to introduce you. But first, I want to introduce myself. I am Dr. Sammy Meese. I am Next Gen Chair. I am a TCC alumni of 2018, and I am in Georgetown practicing. And I would like to go ahead and introduce my panelists for TBCE. We have Ms. Sarah Matthews. She is our Director of Licensing there at TBCE. And next we have Jennifer Hertzenberg. She is the operations manager there at TBCE. Thank you, Jennifer. And we have Mr. Christopher Burnett, general counsel of TBCE. Uh, right before I let these awesome panelists start talking about uh, things about TBC, I wanna make sure that you guys understand that we have a Q&A at the bottom of your screen. If you can address your questions to that particular check, to that particular box, the Q&A, and then if you wouldn't mind, if you're a student, go to the chat box. Tell me if you're a student, if you go to TCC, Parker, or Palmer, please uh, put that in there. And then at the very end, we will get to your questions and uh, answer anything that you have. I will say, if you are a student, this is TBCE. I've been in your shoes. Please don't hesitate to answer or ask any questions that you have. This is the time to do it. We have TBCE in front of you. Please ask your questions. There is no stupid, no right or wrong question at all. Let's get that addressed for you because I've been in your shoes and I know how intimidating it can be. So without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's start with Miss Sarah Matthews. She is gonna talk about how to apply for a DC license in the state of Texas. Whenever you're ready, Miss Sarah. Hi everybody. Um, I, I just wanted to first mention to all of you, if you ever have any questions, feel free to call us. Um, if you hear something from somebody else, it's always best to get the right answer from TBCE directly. So please feel free to call us at any time. Um, our application um, for a new license is available on our board website. Our board website address is www.tb ce.texas, all spelled out, .gov. You can find this uh, new license application under the publications link and then under forms. And it will be the first item at the top. Um, there's a list of instructions and the application itself is uh, four pages long. Um, so you will complete that application. Um, you are able to submit that either, you can mail it in with a check for the um, application fee of 200, or you can fax or email the application and you will be able to pay with a credit card directly on our website. Um, the applications, um, once received, they're processed weekly. Um, as far as uh, how long it, obtain, it takes to obtain a license, everybody's situation is different. Um, a typical license is, is issued within a month or two. Um, if you have not graduated yet and you are in Tri-10, Tri-11, you are welcome to go ahead and start that application process. Um, so once we receive your application, um, again, I do process those on a weekly basis, you'll receive a, uh, an email from me letting you know that your application has been reviewed and you have um, certain items that need to be requested to be sent in to us uh, in order for you to be eligible for our jurisprudence exam. Just to kind of give you an idea, um, we will need uh, all your undergrad transcripts. Eventually we will need your chiropractic transcript and diploma. You'll request your national board scores to be sent to us. And you will also um, take a, a, do a background check. And those instructions will be provided to you once you've submitted your application and payment. Um, we do want that to be the first item um, we receive so that we can create a file for you. So then once your application is complete, meaning you've received all those items, you'll be made eligible for our state jurisprudence exam, which is over uh, the exam covers our uh, laws and rules in Texas. Um, the exam itself is offered online. Um, so once you're eligible, you are able to uh, take it at your own convenience. 
So uh, once you take and pass the jurisprudence exam, you will pay a prorated licensing fee. That will be communication you receive from me, um, letting you know how much that um, fee will be. And then once you've completed uh, the you completed the prorated form, which you'll, 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 I'll be giving that to you um, through email after you've taken and passed the exam. Once the, the form and fee are received, a new license would be issued to you within 10 business days. Now, when that app, the, the license is issued, uh, you will receive an email from me with your license number. So you'll have that um, available to you um, before you receive a copy of the mail. That pretty much sums it up as far as the application process goes. I don't know if you have any questions for me, Dr. Mies. All righty. Um, let's go ahead and go with um, Jennifer right now for the uh, continuing education and what you're expected as a licensed chiropractor in the state of Texas and how the human trafficking uh, in ties with your continuing education. Whenever you're ready, Jennifer. All right. Thank you, Dr. Mies. And thank you to um, Kara and TCA for allowing us the opportunity uh, to speak with the students and our new doctors today. Um, I will segue off of the last thing that Sarah talked about. So um, once you are licensed, um, your first license is prorated. Um, and that means um, it's, it's only for a certain period of time. Um, you, necess you won't necessarily get the full two-year license renewal once you're initially licensed and no CE is required during that prorated period. <clears throat> um, continuing education would start um, after your first renewal and by the time you renew for the second time. Um, so as a licensee in the state of Texas, you're required to complete 16 hours a year. Um, four of those hours currently include what we call board required hours. And it's two hours of ethics, one hour of risk management, and one hour of documentation that relate to our board rules or our Texas Administrative Code. Um, and you have to do those every year. Um, you're on a two-year renewal cycle, but you're doing your CE every year, 16 hours, for a total of 32 uh, by the time uh, you renew your second license. Um, <clears throat> during that period, you are required, you, during your first renewal period where you have to do CE, you are required to also complete a one-time eight-hour requirement for Medicare documentation. Um, we list all of the approved hours on our website, and if the courses contain the four board hour requirement for the ethics, the risk, and the documentation, or the Medicare uh, hours, it'll state so in bold red letters under the course name, so you can clearly see what you've signed up for meets the requirements that you need to complete. <clears throat> um, we do offer some online hours. Um, as a licensee in the state of Texas, you can only have a max of 10 online hours per year. And when I say online, I mean pre-recorded at your own pace. Um, we do offer a lot of webinars such as this. This is considered live uh, because it's real time and interactive. I'm talking to you at a certain time. You can see me. Um, I can't see you, but um, so this is live. A webinar is considered live. Um, and those four TBCE hours and the Medicare, they have to be taken in a live format. So in-person webinar over the phone, those cannot be part of your 10 online hours if you choose to do that. Um, <clears throat> one important thing that passed in uh, September 1st of 2020 was a uh, requirement for the human trafficking awareness training. Uh, this is separate from your continuing education requirements. You have to complete this course in order to renew your license. Um, all healthcare professionals are required to do it. Um, nobody's picking on just chiropractors. It's for everybody. And you have to complete at least one hour in a course that has been approved by HHSC, the Health and Human Services Commission, uh, once every two years 
uh, in order to renew your license. Um, this is something that you would complete and you would send the certificate uh, to the board. Um, if we don't receive your certificate or you don't do the course, you will not be able to renew your license. And I ask that when you do this course, don't wait until the last minute. Um, please get that course over to us as soon as you're eligible to take it uh, because things happen, people wait to the last minute um, and uh, we don't want you to have to pay a late fee and not be able to renew your license when you're supposed to. Um, so don't wait on that. And I think that's all I have, uh, Sammy, Dr. Meese. All righty. All right, Mr. Christopher, you are up and he's gonna talk about the do's and don'ts. It's pretty straightforward students. So <laughs> if you are even thinking about, oh, should I do this or should not? I promise you don't do it. But go ahead, <laughs> Mr. Christopher. Okay, well, thank you, Dr. Meese. Um, again, and also reiterate what everybody else has said. We enjoy the opportunity to talk to students and, uh, and uh, licensees at any chance we get. And so um, if in the future you end up having a question having to do with licensing, continuing ed, um, some bizarre scope of practice question, uh, feel free to give us a call. Our phone numbers are available on the board's website. We'd like to hear from you all. Um, our philosophy is kind of, we'd rather have somebody ask us a question, is this okay? Can I, do, before you do it, as opposed to, oh, I did this, was that all right? Because if you have done it, it's too late. And if, so, um, so do's and don'ts, I'm gonna give you four things to think about. If you remember nothing else I say today, um, remember these four things. The first two are the don'ts. Here's the two don'ts that you need to worry about in order to be successful as a chiropractor. Number one, don't have sex with your patients. Number two, don't defraud your patients. That's it. Those are the two don'ts. You would be amazed at how much time our enforcement committee and our enforcement division spends dealing with chiropractors who can't figure out those two things. So um, if, again, if you don't remember anything else I say, remember those two, okay? Here's two other little maxims that you need to remember as well. And the first one is this. It is this especially true for you that are about to become, uh, go out and start your own chiropractic business, et cetera. Here it is. Vendors lie, okay? You will be approached by all sorts of people trying to sell you all sorts of equipment or all sorts of uh, programs, et cetera, et cetera. And they will tell you, oh yeah, this is within the scope of practice. Oh yeah, no problem. Don't believe them, okay? Their job is to try and sell you something. And once they sell it to you, you'll never, never see them again. So don't believe vendors when they tell you that something's within the scope of practice, okay? And then also the, the last one is something for your peace of mind and also to avoid unnecessary consternation and screaming and yelling and gnashing of teeth. And that is Facebook and Instagram are full of BS, okay? There's all sorts of Facebook pages devoted to chiropractic, and I'd say probably 90% of the stuff that people are saying in there that the board is gonna do, the board isn't gonna do, um, is absolute and complete nonsense. So don't, don't allow yourself to get all bent out of shape about something that you happen to read that the board might be doing on some Facebook post. If you have a question about what the board's gonna be doing, it's real simple. Go to the board's website. We usually have kind of a what's up section that's updated whenever something of interest to pretty much all the, our licensing community uh, is going on. Um, you also can check our board meeting agendas and that will tell you what the board is looking at in terms of possible rulemaking, policy discussions, et cetera. Those agendas are also available on uh, the board's website. So like I said, four things I want you to remember, don't have sex with your patients, don't defraud your patients, vendors lie, and Facebook is full of BS, okay? So I will leave this open to questions at this point. 
Okay, we have one question so far. So guys, if you have any questions, um, please address them in the Q&A so I can filter through them. And I see, Selene, you have your hand up. We'll get to you here in just a second. Let's answer this question first. And this is, I believe, to Miss Jennifer. The human trafficking class, do we need to do that during the first two years or when we start our CEs? So that's a good question. Thank you for submitting it. Um, it would depend on when your license is issued. Um, like I said, that initial license is prorated. So let's say, for example, um, your license is issued in January and your birthday is in March. So you would have to renew your license by March 1st. Um, in order to renew your license, you would have to take that human trafficking training between January when you're licensed and before March 1st. Um, so you would have to take it between that two month period. However, you wouldn't have to take it again um, until uh, your next renewal. So your next renewal would be March 1st of 2024. So anytime between March 1st of 2022 and March 1st of 2024, you would have to take it again for your next renewal. Okay. And then Miss Selene, Miss Kara, can you unmute Miss Selene? It looks like she has a her hand up and needs to answer, I guess, address a question. I have asked her to unmute if she could. Okay, Selene, if you can unmute yourself, oh, that would be great. There you go. No worries. Welcome, ma'am. What Hello. can we help you with? Okay, so I have a question about the transcript. So I did my bachelor's degree outside of the state. So I did um, in the US territory, so in Puerto Rico. So um, I did in two different universities. Um, one university, I know they will consent the transcript in less than a month, but I have another university that will take up to six months. So yeah, it's terrible. Um, so um, my question is, can I start the transcript process now, even I'm a try 10, even if my graduation is in April the 9th, because I'm not sure if they will send it, you know, right away, or I have to wait until I graduate to start the transcripts. Absolutely, you, you can submit that application if it's gonna take, I mean, sorry, the, the trans, request that the transcript be sent to us um, in advance if it's gonna take a while to get here. And I did wanna mention that um, we only require 90 hours of undergraduate coursework with a C or above. So if you attended two schools and one of those schools you um, obtain 90 hours or more, you may not necessarily need to request the transcripts from both schools. Okay, thank you. Okay, anything else, Ms. Salini? No, that's all, thank you. Okay, I appreciate it. And I'm actually gonna spin off on that because uh, I've been in their shoes. I know Salini asked if she can start submitting that early. Can students, um, start doing it in their try eights and try nines? Can they at least fill out the application form and then when things are ready, start submitting when those are completed? Is that a possibility with TBCE? Absolutely. Um, when we receive an application, we will hold that application on file for two years. So as long as that individual is licensed within that two year period, um, they can go ahead and begin the process before graduation. Okay, awesome. Alrighty. And Ms. Kara, can you put Brooke through? She has her hand up. All right, Brooke, if you can unmute yourself. Awesome. Whenever you're ready, ma'am. All right, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Um, so I understood the answer to my previous question about the human trafficking, but I guess I might have missed this. So you said if um, January was when you know, our license was approved and then our birthday was in March, then that would be the renewal. I guess I heard that the pro rate was for the first two years of having your license or it's only until like your birthday that year. Right. So you renew on the first day of your birth month. So okay. Um, okay. that's why the initial license is prorated because it may not be um, two years. Um, okay. So that's why I use that example. Um, if your license is issued in January and your birthday is March 1st, 
you're only going to have to pay for two months, essentially prorated. Uh, but okay. that human trafficking would be due before um, that March uh, renewal would be issued. And then after that, you would be on your two-year cycle. Okay. So it's just until your birthday and then that renewal starts the two year, the CEs, and then the human trafficking class. And then you would get your next renewal in two years. Correct. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Just wanted to clarify that. That was all. Awesome. Thank you, Brooke. That was a very good question. Um, kind of continuing with that, Jennifer, another specific question. Um, do we not need CEs in order to renew our license for the first time but do we need the one hour of human trafficking awareness course? Right, so um, your initial license is prorated, like I said. So you will not, um, CE will not be due during that first renewal, during that prorated period. Um, after you renew for the first time, uh, you will be required to obtain your continuing education hours. Um, and the human trafficking is required for every renewal, whether you're renewing off of a prorated initial license or a two-year renewal license. Okay, and um, no questions yet, but I have a couple questions. Oh, one just popped up, hold on one second. Um, Selene also wanted to ask too, um, there are different lists of places or websites on where we can get continuing education that are approved by TBCE? Uh, we list all of the approved hours on our website. Um, Sarah gave it to you earlier, but it's www.tbce.texas.gov. And there's a continuing education tab on our homepage. And you can go see all the courses that have been approved um, for 2022 and the hours that have been approved online. Um, and I will tell you, if you're ever in question, always come to our website and look because people may tell you that the course is approved and you may take it and it's, it doesn't count towards your relicensure hours. So the complete accurate list is on our website always. And it's updated once a week um, as we get new applications in from our course sponsors. Okay. And then once a DC takes the awareness course, and I know they have to submit it in uh, I believe to one of you guys, I can't remember who, but you can answer that as well. Once that is done and they are in an actual atmosphere practicing, do they have to display the actual human trafficking um, course certificate or some type of sign about human trafficking or anything like that? Yeah, um, we don't require you to display your human trafficking certificate. Um, you can if you want to. Um, but that's not a requirement that we, that we have. Um, and the certifications, uh, they can go to the licensing email address. Sarah and I both have access to that if one or the other is on vacation so we can keep, keep things moving. Um, and it's licensing, L-I-C-E-N-S-I-N-G at T-B-C-E dot Texas, T-E-X-A-S dot gov, G-O-V is in Victor. And we both have access to um, enter those certificates and remove any uh, renewal holds that need to be removed um, once those are in. Okay, um, still waiting on some questions to come through. Guys, this is the time to address any questions you may have or you might think, oh, well, I'll ask later. Probably better to, to get it answered now. So if you really have questions, please put in the Q&A or if you want to ask live, feel free just please get those questions out so we can get those answered for you. Um, also a question, since we're kind of waiting for them, if they want to answer some or ask more questions, a question that I always came up with when I was uh, a student is in taking the actual jurisprudence exam, do I have to go somewhere to take that jurisprudence exam? When will I find out if I take it? How, how much do I, you know, what is the actual grade that I have to make on that jurisprudence exam to go ahead and apply for the actual license? Can you tell me a little bit, a little bit more into detail about that? Absolutely. Um, so the jurisprudence exam is an online exam. Um, so when the applicant is eligible uh, for this exam, they are able to log in with their um, information and take it right away if they want to. 
Um, there is a jurisprudence course that will be available to them. So they'll be able to study that before the exam, um, they take the exam. Um, the jurisprudence exam, once started, um, does have to be completed within two, two hours. And the passing score for that jurisprudence exam is 75. Once um, the exam is taken, the applicant and myself will receive an email with the score. Um, and within a matter of a few days, uh, the applicant will receive an email correspondence from me letting them know how much the jurisprudence exam, I mean, the permitted exam fee would be. Okay, and another person talking about that, Miss Sarah, um, is the jurisprudence course, I don't know if it's meaning the actual exam or the actual um, practice one, is that free? Yes, the course, the jurisprudence course that can be used as a study guide before the exam is, um, there's no additional fee for that. The $200 application fee does cover that uh, course fee. So there would not be an additional um, fee for that course. The, for the course and the exam, it will be a $150 fee. Okay. If I could interject a little bit there on that jurisprudence course that's, that Sarah was talking about that's online. Uh, you don't have to access that or use it before taking the exam. Uh, I think you'd be crazy not to. Um, the board recently, well, it's been going on 10 months now, I guess, maybe. Um, we did a massive revision of that course. It's, uh, it was a little bit out of date, but that covers all the rules and statutes um, that uh, you as a licensee in Texas have to abide by. Um, so, uh, it talks about scope of practice, your business practices, record keeping, licensing renewal, uh, what happens if you get hit with a complaint, uh, all sorts of good stuff. Um, so I think anybody who doesn't take a look at that is doing them a real disservice. Uh, and I don't say that just because I had to write the whole darn thing. <laughs> and I would kind of actually agree with you, Christopher. I decided to actually go through the course myself and you wouldn't believe how many things I did not know um, with TBC that I needed to know and what was in my scope of practice and what is in the statute. So I would highly encourage you guys to do that course because there are some things you will not learn in school um, and don't always trust an answer from a friend or, you know, how long do I have to keep records for please, I would encourage you spend the 150 and take that course. I cannot stress that enough. Um, just kind well, of reiterating Christopher as well. Yeah, and, and here's the thing you all need to be aware of. So what defines your scope of practice as a chiropractor in Texas? Well, that's a good question. Um, the answer is mainly chapter 201 of the Texas Occupations Code. There's also other chapters in the Texas Occupations Code um, that uh, pertain to your scope of practice. There's also some things actually in, um, uh, in the health and safety code that pertain to your scope of practice. And there's also Supreme Court decisions, uh, Texas Supreme Court decisions that pertain to your scope of practice. So um, to say that there's a kind of a one-stop easy place to find out all the information that you know in, in statute and rule, um, that's not quite the case. I wish it were, but that's not the way the law works. Um, so that's uh, knowing what's out there um, in terms of the statutes and, and, and rules is a good thing for anybody that's practicing. Um, I, I will say this too, that we don't expect you all to be attorneys and know everything about uh, how these statutes and rules necessarily uh, came into being, where they are, et cetera. But just having an awareness that they actually are there um, will serve you in good stead uh, as you go forward in your practice. Okay. 
Uh, still no other questions, but uh, Miss Jennifer or Miss Sarah, I don't know which one I need to address it to. I'm thinking Sarah, but I could be wrong. Let's say I just graduated from TCC. I submitted everything into you guys. You guys have my application. Can I go start practicing? Can I go ahead and call myself doctor? Great question. Um, oh. Answer to. Well, go ahead, go ahead, Chris. You can go for it. No, 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 no. <laughs> you are okay. not licensed. If you and are, and, and I understand why not, but why? What do I physically have to have in order to call myself Dr. Sammy Meese and start treating patients? What do I have to have in the state of Texas? You have to have a license issued by the Texas Board of Chiropractic Examiners. With five numbers, correct? The TX, whatever those numbers are. So students, right. when you graduate chiropractic school, even though they may name you Dr. Sammy Meese, Dr. Selene Rios, you are not a doctor until you get that license that you cannot even go out and say, hey, I'm a chiropractor. Come see. You can't even say that. You right. have to wait for those numbers, for that license. You don't have to have it in hand. I understand correctly. As long as you have that license, that number, and you have that, I think you can start practicing. You don't physically have to have it, but once you have it, we have to have that displayed, I believe, in the waiting room, not in an exam or an operation room. It's an exact exact waiting area. Is that correct, TBCE? Mm -hmm. Needs to be prominently displayed, yes. So okay. There, I, part of the confusion comes between you all as students are about to receive an, act, an academic degree. So you will be a, a doctor, you will get a doctorate of chiropractic, DC. When I went to law school, I received a Juris Doctorate, okay? So I can say JD, okay? Um, with you all, however, you can't call yourselves doctor uh, until, uh, as everybody was saying, until you get that license issued by the board. Um, so saying that you may have that academic degree, but, but if you're running around saying that I'm Dr. John Smith, um, I do not have the, uh, you, you are, and you were to treat patients, you're, you're practicing chiropractic without, uh, without a license, and that is against the law. So I just ran and got something that was in my waiting room. You can display it however you want to in a platform, a picture frame. This is probably going to read backwards to you guys, but I made my own frame. And it is literally at my front desk office for people to actually see. It's very small. It's probably a four by seven. Uh, I just put in a five by seven frame. This is what you have to have displayed in the front of your office where you practice, not an operator, not an exam room. But as you can see, I have my degree from TCC. That is displayed in my exam room. That is not in the actual um, waiting area, but also TBCE will also give you a big nice one that you can display anywhere you want to, but I have it in my waiting room. It's mainly this one you have to have in your waiting area. Um, is that correct? <laughs> if that's wrong, tell me now, <laughs> but that's what I have and I think that's what you guys have to do. Um, if you guys decide to work somewhere and the employer that you work for tell you, oh, you don't have to display that out there. Guess who gets in trouble? You do, not your employer. Uh, so make sure you advocate for yourself wherever you guys work um, so that it is displayed for the public to actually see. Uh, let's see. Okay, no other questions. Anything else that you guys can think of that always gets asked or gets misconstrued or anything like that, because I'm kind of out of questions. Um, yeah, well, I've got a good, I think this one would be pertinent for y'all. So this kind of goes into, well, what happens after I graduated, I've got my, my uh, academic degree and I'm waiting on uh, the board to, you know, get all my stuff done, do the jurisprudence exam, et cetera, waiting for my national boards. I'm a graduate, can I go work for a chiropractor? 
And if, if so, what can I do? Well, uh, the board has uh, uh, delegation rules. And what it says is that if you're a recent graduate, you can go work for a licensee under certain, with certain qualifications that licensee has to have been licensee and uh, uh, practicing in good standing for five years. One of those years has to be licensed here in Texas. Um, and you can go work for them up to one year from the anniversary of your graduation. You can't do it after that. Um, and what you are allowed to do, um, you can do manipulations and adjustments, but you're doing it under the supervision of that licensee that you're employed by. Okay. While you're doing that, you can't call yourself doctor. You can't call yourself a chiropractor. You have to wait again until you get that license. Um, there's some requirements that your employer uh, has to provide information about you to the board uh, that's spelled out in the rule. Um, but just know that if you're waiting around uh, to get licensed uh, because of the jurisprudence, waiting for the jurisprudence exam or waiting for your boards, you can go work for a chiropractor and do manipulations and adjustments. Basically, the big, pro the big prohibition on anybody that's not licensed is you can't do uh, uh, you can't do a diagnosis and you can't do treatment plans. The, the only licensees can do those. Okay. Uh, one other question. There's still no question. Oh, yes, Ms. Jennifer. Sorry. Go right ahead, ma'am. I had a couple of things. Um, I want to tell our students and new licensees, uh, please make sure that you have a valid email address on file um, once you get licensed uh, with the board. Um, this is where we're going to send you your renewal notices if you get audited for continuing education or any important updates uh, that may impact your license, uh, we're gonna send them by email. Um, so make sure that you have a valid email address on file. Make sure you open the email and make sure you read it. Um, don't unsubscribe. Um, we're not sending you um, photos of my new puppy or uh, anything like that. It's, a, it's important things that, that impact your license renewal. Um, and that's our primary source of contact with you. Um, the other thing, um, whenever you're corresponding with the board, whether it's by phone, uh, email, fax, or mail, please put your license number um, on that correspondence. Um, so Sarah and I, or whoever um, is dealing with your documentation so we can assist you faster and assist your peers um, as well. Okay, and um, knowing as um, getting emails from TDCE. Guys, don't ignore those. Sometimes there are new rules that have changed that it's your responsibility to go in and look and see what your scope of practice has changed or not changed. So just because you see TDCE, don't click delete or read later, read it. And then if you need to go into it a little bit deeper, go back and read it again later that night. And then if you do get audited by TDCE, which people don't freak out, I was audited for my CE last year. Make sure you respond and get that in within a decent notice. I think, Jennifer, don't, don't they give you, what, a week or two weeks to send that in? Yeah, so the, procrastinator. Yeah, the initial notice is sent out, and you have 10 business days to respond. Um, if you don't respond after 10 business days, your license is placed on a conditional status. Um, and we send you a notice by mail at that point as well, um, in case it went to your junk mail or you missed it or it got lost in cyberspace. We do send out uh, the letter in the form another way um, just to try to make contact with you. Okay, and then if you guys decide to work um, for a practice and then end up leaving, you have to update your information on where you're practicing with TBCE within 30 days, is that correct? So make sure you guys keep that updated because um, there can be fines and stuff and everything with that. So be up and up with everything for TBCE, even a name change, a phone number change, an email address, anything, make sure that's updated with them so they can easily contact you and take care of all that. Um, and actually, you really don't have a choice. It's the law. You, you must maintain a current active email address and physical address with the board. Okay. Alrighty. 
Last minute, guys, if you have any other last questions, raise your hand. Oh, hold on, one just popped up. Okay, do we send all the CE forms to the same email we were given earlier? Also, what would cause us to get audited for the CEs? Okay, so don't send in your CE certificates to the board unless you are audited or unless I ask you for them. Um, we do random audits based on uh, renewals. So for example, uh, we're in January. So next month in February, I'm gonna do a random sample of all the renewals uh, for January. And I will audit a sample of those uh, to check on their CE compliance. Anything else, guys? Let's see, hold on. I got put in the wrong box. Okay, when a recent graduate is working under a licensed doctor for the one year period, will they have to leave the practice even if they are still going through boards as well as a jurisprudence exam? Oh, Chris, you need to unmute. About that. I was trying to conserve time and space. Um, the answer is kind of yes and kind of no. So that one year requirement or that one year window after you graduate, that is allowing you to, to and I'm going to use the, the word, to work under uh, a licensee almost as a full chiropractor. Um, you can do the manipulations and adjustments, okay? Once that one year anniversary uh, uh, is over, you can't do manipulations and adjustments anymore for that licensee or for anybody, okay? So could you still work at that clinic, that practice, whatever? Yes, you could, but you couldn't, you'd basically be office staff. Um, you know, you wouldn't be able to do the, what you had just been doing. Now, I think the rationale for this is that uh, they wanted to make sure that uh, people who were, let's say, uh, didn't do too well on their national boards, <laughs> didn't want them having out there, out there actually uh, doing manipulation and adjustments until such time as they passed. So I think that was the thinking behind that rule. But like I said, once that one year anniversary passes and you're not licensed yet, you must stop. And then another question. Guys, if you do have questions, please put them in the Q&A so we can filter through them because I'm having to scroll back and look. When are we going to start the human trafficking portion and how long is this webinar going to be? I am joining as a licensed chiropractor. I thought this was going to be a one hour human trafficking webinar. Whoops. All right, so that was probably a miscommunication on your end. The, this was not a human trafficking webinar. This, was, um, this webinar was entitled for students and new licensee with TBCE, how to apply for a Texas license, and uh, what are about the continuing education course and the actual uh, human awareness. Basically, what is actually, what you're supposed to do, how to apply for one, when are you supposed to take your CEs and when are you supposed to renew the actual uh, or do the human trafficking course? Um, so apologize if you misread that information. Uh, yeah, we did not put this as an actual human trafficking course. All right, let's see, any more questions? Okay, all right. Um, there's no other questions as of this time. So I'll go ahead and wrap it up. I wanna thank each of you, Jennifer, Sarah, Mr. Christopher from TBCE, taking your time out for our students and new licensees here in the state of, uh, here in Texas. And if you guys have any questions with them, reach out to them. Uh, they'll be able to answer any of your questions. Thank you guys again for taking the time out. Can't thank you enough. Um, in terms of next gen, there are gonna be maybe one to two more webinars. Uh, coming up over the next few months. Those are to be announced. 
And um, I believe that is it for me from Next Gen. Again, thank you guys. Uh, Miss Kara, if you have any updates or anything for TCA. Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Kara Tanwar, the Executive Director of the Texas Chiropractic Association. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, mirror Dr. Mies's thanks to um, all of those from TBCE. We have the pleasure of working with them very closely, and um, it's been awesome working with them over the past few months since I started last year. So thanks all for being with us today and answering all these questions. And if any of you are not members and you are students, um, student membership is free. So please visit our website at chirotexas.org and just get registered today. You'll, be, you'll have access to the benefits. Um, we hope to have more student opportunities. We're about ready to launch a new website, uh, just doing some edits and that sort of thing right now. So it'll be a lot more interactive. We will have a public facing page for information for the public to come and visit our website so they can visit and understand more about chiropractic if they have questions. And of course we have the Find a DC program on our website, it's still active now. And if you are a member of our association and a practicing DC, you're on there. So if anybody is looking for a DC in the area, your name would pop up in that search. So it's a great member benefit. We do have a few events coming up live and virtual. Uh, Midwinter is just three weeks away in Lubbock. So it is a CE opportunity. It's one of our, it's our second largest uh, event every year. And then of course the biggest event every year is Cairo Texpo, which is June 10th through 12th. And that will be in Frisco, Dallas. Uh, more information is coming out in March. So we'll see a lot of marketing for that soon. Um, but otherwise, please visit our website, follow us on social media. You will get all the latest and greatest. Tomorrow is the one-year anniversary of the Supreme Court an uh, win. So congratulations, chiropractic. And uh, we will have a little social media post about that tomorrow as well. So I can't believe it's been a full year. And uh, But otherwise, feel free to reach out to your office staff here, info at chirotexas.org. We are happy to answer any questions. And um, you are always welcome just to reach out to us. That, that's what we're here for. We're here to help you, our members, and just the chiropractic community in general. We're here to protect your profession. So thank you again, everybody, for joining us. Dr. Mies for organizing. Um, it's been awesome working with you, too. Uh, and just, it's been a pleasure. Awesome. And if, you, if any of you guys have any questions, uh, being a new chiropractor right out of, you know, college, chiropractic college, um, you can reach out to me. I am Next Gen Chair. I am here for whatever you need. If I don't know the answer, I will find it and guide it to where I can get that answer for you. Um, join, stay an active member with TC, TCA. It is very beneficial for you as a chiropractor in the state of Texas, knowing what's coming up, what's affecting our scope of practice, because that TCA is helping us uh, in the state of Texas. So stay a member once you graduate. Yes, you have to pay a little bit for memberships, but you get so many great benefits. Other than that, thank you guys again from TBCE. Very excited to have you on for the very first time. I'm sure this will not be the last. We will have more probably in the future. And thank you guys for joining and listening to our awesome panelists. And you guys go forth, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time.